All right, so my name is Aaron Burns. I am the CFO of Twitch. Um, I got together with these guys back in uh, around January. We started talking. What are we going to build? This BSV thing looks pretty interesting. Uh, I dig it, I dig it. Um, and uh, we ended up forming up like Voltron and kind of creating something interesting here. Um, so digital rights ownership and royalties on Bitcoin. Who the hell am I to talk about? digital rights ownership and royalties on Bitcoin, right? So um, it's a little bit about me. My name is Aaron Burns. Uh, I work in the film industry. I've worked in Hollywood since I was 19 years old. Uh, my first movie was Sin City, and I've kind of just worked all the way up from there, not to name drop, but some of the guys that I've worked with, Quentin Tarantino, Eli Roth, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, lots of different directors and, and people that you would recognize. And um, I'm also a director. I write uh, films, I produce films, and... I, I star in films, so my latest movie is available on Netflix if you want to check it out. It's called Madre. It's in Spanish, so you'll need subtitles, um, but it's being remade in English right now uh, by Universal Pictures, and uh, I'm the CFO of Twitch. So. <clears throat> uh, I, the management of IP rights is a trillion-dollar industry, but it's plagued by long wait times. I'm sure Jimmy can attest to that, um, and high costs, right? large administrative costs. That's, that's one of the biggest uh, factors in why studio movies never really turn a profit, right? Because it, you have so many people working on payroll that the movie never really makes a profit and you never really get out of your gross because of the fact that you just are constantly paying people to keep track of all of the things that go into making the movie, right? All the royalties. Harry Potter on, on paper has never turned a profit, right? Star Wars has never turned a profit. So a lot of actors and things don't receive royalties for these, these roles they've acted in because the mo their, their deals are set for after the movie turns a profit, right? So with, with uh, digital rights ownership, which is a term I'm not sure if exists, but it's kind of something I'm coining, right? Rather than DRM, which was never about management of rights. It, it, it was just like an obstruction to uh, you, you being able to interact with the content that you wanted, the content you purchased. So in this case, it's, it's going to be about owning your own content and then being able to la later prove that at another, at, at another time just in case somebody is messing with your rights as a content creator and owner. Um, so this is going to remove administrative content, uh, uh, costs for the most part and provide uh, greater access to your content, right? So digital rights ownership today. It's Instagram, right? It's a big mess. So uh, Instagram does not claim ownership of any content that you post on the site or service. Instead, you hereby grant Instagram non-exclusive, fully paid, royalty-free, transferable, sub-licensable, uh, worldwide license to content that you post on or through our service, which basically means they own your fucking shit, right? They own your content, right? You agree that a business or other entity may pay us to display your username, likeness, photos. Actors get paid a shit ton of money for their likeness, right? You're just giving that away just by clicking, I agree, on a TOS, right? So photos, along with any other metadata or actions you take in connection or paid uh, sponsored content promotions or uh, without any compensation to you, which means they will not pay you. There's nothing you can do about it and you agree to it. Just by clicking your mouse once, you gave away everything. You gave away the farm, right? So traditional social media owns your content, right? So this is the guy, right? This is your friend, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg. They trust me, dumb fucks, right? This is what Mark Zuckerberg said back in 2004 when he was talking to a friend on chat about why Harvard was giving, uh, people were giving uh, him emails, right? And he's just like, they trust me. They're stupid, right? So there you go, right? Zuck, Zuck laughing at you, right? That's the Zuck, right? So uh, here, here's Twitter. Example of Twitter doing a similar thing. Uh, this is um, Twitter posting, making ads out of people's tweets, people's intellectual property, right? Uh, making giant billboards all across New York City, in the subways, all across the world. Uh, this is happening on a daily basis. And here's, here's one uh, account of this. It's kind of a story told in three panes, right? So. Uh, so this billboard's going up. This is her content, right? You can see it right here. She's saying, okay, what's happening right now, right? She doesn't understand what's going on. And they make this giant billboard. This thing is huge. It's the side of a building, right? They painted it by hand, right? So they put labor into this. And uh, our friend uh, Randy over here asking, I wonder if she got paid for this, right? <laughs> and somebody said, probably not. I believe they technically belong, it belongs to Twitter, 
right? So this is, and, and, and then her payment for all of this hard work, all, her, her content being used by this giant mega conglomeration is, Jack liked her post. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that, right? Great. Jack just liked my tweet. What's next? Is Zuckerberg going to poke me? I'm out. She got off the platform. She's no longer, she don't want to be on Twitter anymore, right? Because they took her stuff and they moved it and put it out there for everybody to see, right? Without, she, she gets the credit, but I mean, her follower account went up like 100 people. Like it didn't, it didn't do anything for her, right? So what the fuck are we going to do, right? House is on fire. This is fine. That's, this is what the, 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 the social media companies want you to think, right? This is how they want you to react to this whole situation. No, everything's fine. Don't worry. It's always been like this. It always will be like this, right? Like, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's the opposite of how things always were in the past, but for some reason now in the social media generation, this, we're just supposed to be okay with somebody else making money off of us, right? So what are we going to do? This is what DRO, digital rights ownership, looks like in the future. It's just a TX ID, right? This can be associated with just about anything, as we know, right? So a TX ID can act as a pointer for any kind of content, text, images, video, code, patents, corporate identity, government identity, right? This is just about putting some information on chain, whether encrypted or not encrypted, and then having people access it, having companies access it, having companies like Legally Chain, for example, doing KYC to make sure that you're the owner of that content. If it's a government identity, if it's your passport on chain, if it's whatever, we can just associate it with that pointer, right? So it's a pointer that's locked in place and time on chain so it can be referenced, but can also be changed through versioning to update ownership and or content of that TXID, right? So these pointers can be, can even own other pointers, right? Obviously, right? So you could have a TXID that is an identity, right? Or you can have a TXID that is a picture. And one TXID could be the owner of the other TXID, right? Just depending on what we encrypt and how we, how we link those two things uh, together. So going forward, you got your identity solutions, right? You got legally chained if you want your KYC stuff. You got a solution like uh, Dean Little's uh, Metalink, which is uh, more of an on-chain kind of solution, more of a hands-off approach where you register a TXID on-chain and then you just kind of uh, take responsibility for it. You can connect it up to whatever you want later on. Great, wonderful. Um, and then you have uh, uh, Satchmo's uh, uh, Bitcoin schema, which is a similar approach to Dean's, um, but uh, more connected to his map protocol. Right. <clears throat> so here's a story, right? Cows love the sacks, right? Uh, this girl, Erin uh, Herman, she goes out with her father. She records a video, right? It's her father in a field playing saxophone for a bunch of cows. The cows come running, and it's a viral sensation, right? She, if you look down here, you can see what her counts are. That is uh, uh, 38,000 uh, retweets and 140,000 likes, right? Now, where does this go from here? Oh, my gosh, the local news picks it up, right? It's all over every single local news station on, in, in the United States. It's an internet sensation, right? Not only are they putting it on Twitter, they're showing it on their local news broadcast, their morning news broadcast. Uh, good morning, Phoenix. Good morning, Sacramento. All of these guys are using this content by just asking her, can I use your content, right? And sometimes she'll say yes, but sometimes they don't even ask. They just do it. What are you going to do, right? So then what happens? Oh, traditional news media picks it up. Yahoo News. C, uh, uh, CBS News, Time, HuffPost, right? They're out there using this content, right? It's just a tweet. It's all, it's all good for her, right? She's going she's gonna to make out like a bandit. At what, right? So then international news is picking this up. Russia, every, every country in the world is playing this on their local news, right? Everybody's making paper off of this. Zuck wins again, right? There he is, laughing at you. Why? Because he's the one making the paper. He makes the money off of not only her, but all those local news stations that have their thing. He's making the money off of that too, right? So this is you. These are your friends and family and social graph. And here's the bling bling that Zuck is making, right? He's winning, right? This goes for Jack Dorsey. This goes for just about anybody else that is making money off of free content that they are getting from users for giving them a place to put it basically. That's all they're giving them, right? Some eyeballs, maybe a little bit of attention, some dopamine, but that's all you're getting out of them. You aren't getting paid, right? Everyone wins except her. 
This is her follower count right now, right? Even if she, she only had one follower that day that she posted that and it went up to 3,000, what does that get her? Nothing, right? She's not Kim Kardashian. She doesn't have uh, 61 million followers on Twitter, right? No brands are going to come to her and say, hey, promote our content. We'll pay you $50,000 a post. That's not going to happen, right? That was her shot at virality. Gone, right? When we play on these social media things, lots of people kind of see it as winning the lottery if you go viral, you know? Like, it's, it's something that you come up with something that's a unique, surprising piece of information, and people go out there with it, and they post it and put it out there, and it goes crazy, and maybe you get a bunch of followers and a bunch of retweets, and it feels good for a second. You know, I've had some viral content in, in, in my past. It feels good until something else comes along and basically creates a new way of thinking about making money from your content online, right? So how do royalties work today, right? I don't know if you've ever seen this episode of Seinfeld. It's a very famous episode, one of the most famous. Uh, Jerry is on a Japanese game show. That it goes very well for him on this Japanese game show, and he ends up getting all these royalty checks, right? But the thing is, at each one of these royalty checks is only worth 12 cents, right? So he's spending all day signing these royalty checks for 12 cents. It's ridiculous, but it's kind of like, it's money. If we're just putting, taking one second to sign a piece of paper, you get 12 cents. Great. That sounds, that sounds good. But then he ends up with carpal tunnel syndrome, right? And, it, um, it, it, and these Japanese business show owners end up at Kramer's house. Kramer fakes like he's running to bed and breakfast, and he actually ends up making more than Jerry by just running a bed and breakfast based on Jerry's fame from being on the Japanese game show, right? So Kramer didn't have to do anything. He's like Jack Dorsey, right? And Jerry's the one signing these checks ending up with carpal tunnel syndrome, right? So Royalties currently, this is how they work in my industry, in the film industry, right? So you either have, you have your studio, right? They go and they make the movie. Uh, depending on how your deal is sorted out, this is how this works, right? It goes studio, 100%. That goes to your agent, right? Your agent takes their cut, which is 10%. That's why their industry is called the 10 percenteries, right? Uh, then it goes to the managers. Some actors and, uh, and filmmakers have a 5% deal with their manager, but it's similar, right? So then it goes to your lawyer. Most lawyer fees is 5% as well right? And then it goes to the client, and then the government takes another 35%, and then you're left with 40, right? So if your deal was $100,000 here, you end up with 40,000, barely able to pay your, your, uh, your, your mortgage in your Hollywood Hills house, right? Um, and this is paper checks, and this method usually takes between six and 12 months. I'm currently in a contract negotiation that's gone for 18 months, just so you know, right? Paper checks, you get the paper, check, then you gotta go to the bank and uh, it's time. It takes time, right? So, the red carpet problem. Here's a royalties problem that, that, that Bitcoin could easily solve, right? So there's this service called Wire Image, right? Basically what Wire Image is, every time that you go and you see uh, footage or pictures being taken on the red carpet, they're, the people behind the cameras, those photographers, are immediately taking those pictures, taking those, hey, hey, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, take the picture, take the picture. They hand that card off to their assistant. Their assistant runs to the van, puts it in the thing, uploads it to Wire Image, and then it sits on Wire Image. Just in case some newspaper or some news or uh, Entertainment Weekly or whoever wants to pick that content, that, that picture up and use it in their newspaper, that photographer gets all of the credit in all of the royalties for that picture. He might pay a little percentage or subscription to Wire Image for being a part of the service, but he owns it all because he moved his finger that much, right? Granted, we benefit from this, right? Because it looks cool. Oh, I'm with Logan Paul and, and uh, my friend uh, Daryl Sabera, the spy kid. Great, right? With Eli Roth at the Baby Driver premiere. Oh, wonderful, right? That's great. Right? Keanu Reeves and Anna the Armas and, and Lorenzo Izzo and Eli Roth, right? With little old me, right? But it benefits the movie. It benefits all that stuff. However, it could benefit everybody at the same time, right? Monetarily, financially, right? What if instead of us going and taking the picture, everybody that's sitting on that red carpet knows what the deal is, right? Our publicist walks out, the QR code or pay mail, and says, if you'd like to take a picture of Mr. Roth, please include him in the transactions that you're going to be doing for all of this stuff, right? If you'd like to take a picture with Mr. Burns, please do the same, right? And yes, those are my real uh, things if you want to send me some money. That'd be cool. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it, it basically ends up like this, right? This is what all of these deals end up looking like in the future, right? Royalties of tomorrow, right? The studio would just go, 
okay, the money's ready. Somebody just watched, one of the 200 uh, passengers on the airplane just watched the Avengers, okay? So now we're going to send out one transaction, right, for that one purchase as a microtransaction, and the agent's going to get 10%, the manager's going to get 10%, the lawyer's going to get 5%, the client's going to get the 75%, and then he takes care of his taxes at a later date, right? But that was a Bitcoin multiple output, and it was instant. It happened immediately when the person watched the content, not six months down the line, not when the accountants got to it, not when the 15 other pieces of paperwork needed to be filled in. All that stuff is when you sign the contract, it is stipulated in the contract that this is how these transactions are going to go, and we just take care of it that way, and we're done, right? We don't have to go through 15 different people. It doesn't have to go through intermediaries. There's nobody taking. There's no middlemen. None of that. The studio pays directly to these people, right? Multi-output. Bitcoin transaction, super easy. We've all seen it. We know how it works. It works well. Nobody's ever been upset, you know? It works. <clears throat> For me, what this provides us is, I'm gonna get a little like futuristic here, but I see down a line, right? My time preference is low. I'm a person that, I live very modestly. I don't live in Hollywood. I live in Santiago, Chile, right? I come and travel if I need to get on an airplane. Uh, I can be in LA for a meeting in the morning. I can get on a plane at nine o'clock. I can be in LA at 7 a.m., right? And I can go do all the things that I wanna do, but that's because I want my kids and my grandkids and my great-grandkids and on down the line to have the best life that I could possibly give them, right? So every cent that I'm making right now isn't for me. It's not for me to go buy a mansion, uh, Maserati and all that stuff. I could buy that, right? But it's not going to help anything with my kids, right? It's not going to give them the best life that I could possibly give them. And I want to teach them that same modesty to be able to plan for the future and to be able to secure the values of our family going forward, right? So what this does is when you put something on Bitcoin, it has the ability to just live on, right? It can go on for 400 years. Like, no, but there's nothing stopping it from doing that, right? Once you put the, the you, you kind of kick the, the rock, it'll just keep on rolling down the hill, right? As long as the miners are mining, like, those transactions will keep coming in depending on the parameters that you put into the, into, to the contract. So for me, this is about expanding out our level of influence from the single uh, parents that, that create the first uh, family unit, right, and ex expanding out for as many generations as we possibly can, right? We all kind of see that, right? You have your first kid and you are looking through a tunnel that your father looked through, that your grandfather looked through, that everybody looked through, and you're seeing your ancestors, your ancestors looking back at you through that tunnel because every single one of us has an ancestor and had that, and every single one of us had a father or a mother that had that moment through that tunnel, right? Because we all come from somebody, right? So for me, it, I really do see this as, as a very important um, and, and groundbreaking feature of royalties because now we can do micro payments, we can do micro transactions, we can do micro everything um, that we are no longer dependent on these giant megalopolis accounting firms and corporations and all these different kinds of things. Sure, we can still have those for very specific cases, but we don't need them anymore as long as we have Bitcoin and as long as we have a chain of title, right, which is an industry term in, in film, which basically is, is a showing of where something came from and where it is now, right? All, the entire origin story of an idea creation, right? We can, we, can, we can do that now, right? We've never been able to do that or have an immutable version of that. Right now it's all based on paper and it can be fraudulent and it can be fake and it can be uh, tricked up and, and scammed up and, and moved around and all that stuff. But if we have an immutable ledger, <laughs> it's over, right? We're done with that. All right, next human problem, what are we gonna solve? Like, give me my flying car, right? So. This is very important to me. It's very important to Twitch. Um, we really want to be at the forefront of helping solve these problems, right? Right now, it's all pie in the sky. You know, like nobody's using Bitcoin, right? Especially nobody's using BSV. But we're all super early, right? We just don't want to be too early. And we don't want to, we want to give this our best shot, right? We want to put our best foot forward to make sure that this is successful. So for us, um, we really want to uh, just encourage people to create their stuff here, to leave their stuff here, to uh, work with us on things like the API that we're creating for uh, being able to um, 
host images on, on Twitch and, or, or bots or different kinds of things that can post content that, that are constantly being enabled and getting better and getting better, right? Because the more people that get into this, the more people that dive in to this whole idea, the better, right? It's just going to make this more legitimate because currently it's legitimate to us, but nobody knows about us yet. So I just want to say thank you and I uh, hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.